Let's get started. Uh, okay, so first off, we're going to start with like, you know, one on one case, anyways, you know, it's two terms. Uh, transgenderism, you know, is basically like anyone who identifies with the gender at birth. Uh, for example, a trans woman is like male at birth, um, and is raised as a male, and then later in life, when, you know, when they transition, they, um, you know, the best one. Uh, this can also include non binary people who may or may not identify as transgender according to their political preference. Cisgender people are those who um, you know, live as a gender they're assigned at birth, like a uh, female assigned at birth, physical, you know, and they don't um, you know, transition into uh, non binary or male. Okay, and so my study um, focused on the development of between them, and it's because, you know, as we kind of see in recent political years, Trans people are becoming a topic debates. Um, so I was kind of interested in, like, okay, so what are like the fundamental like you know roots of this? Since then, we're manifesting like social, social stigma against transgender people. So of course, the cultural norms of gender binary, um, you know, lack of lack of medical care, uh, lack of these impacts of these cases over the past few you know, stuff going on. So um, you know, I would kind of you know. With all the progress and process of the you know, past century or so, there's been no significant fluctuation in the overall sex and gender problems, as in males are so like the stereotypes themselves. Males are providers and females are caretakers for themselves, even though there has been some uh good or wrong. Uh, they so um, so what I was kind of looking into like the the basis of this study. Uh, you know, I was kind of thinking, okay, so where does this even start you know, like, in the version of gender movements in general? Um, the social war theory causes that individuals adapt sex and gender universes to fulfill their assigned roles, um, which can perpetuate which can perpetuate change where it comes to any social conformity. Um, so after an infinite period of current studies on between cisgender and gender diverse people, um, you're not looking at many young children. Um, and like and either that or only with just different transgender people. And so I was more interested in trying to do an adult study between the two groups because I have never seen a study like that before. And contrary to most uh, studies that focus on children because we assume that identity information is only done in childhood, um, but I think I'll kind of like, you know, Really have a very tight life, and they can involve multiple factors in general. So, gender constitution, 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 Community study because there's so many compounding factors in this age, uh, culture, language, you know, you know, comorbid um, mental illnesses. So it can be hard to find a consistent neurological difference across studies. Uh, there's also been studies, neurological studies done on transgender, transgender adults as well. Um, you know, they can even from like you know, consistent differences pre and post hormone condition. But as I said before, these are uh, these are recent studies. And these are working field and other cases have to be done. Um, and also, like, you know, personal disorders can impact uh, social, uh, social processing in general. So, right, so the main so thing I study was to, like I mentioned before, um, explore the variations of identity formation and gender reflection. Uh, it was a mixed method politics survey. So what this means is that I can both quantitative and qualitative measures because I want to see both statistical and self-descriptive data to see if they, if they match that or any nuances that quantitative measures might have missed. The quantitative measures have, there, um, had four um, sections. Uh, social gender recognition, which means how satisfied or particular how, how, how others see or identify you. Um, gender reflection and information scale, which um, kind of as they kind of pretty much the aim, measures how much you think and how kind of affect your gender. The uh, gender age gender scale, how strong your gender is, or your sense of gender is in general, and ABC lens, which means how socially relevant your gender identity 
is put into supporting regular social situations. The quality of measures were pretty straightforward as they're basically five open-ended questions that linked into the time, depth, depth, and interpretation of questioning and current gender expression of the individuals. So I'll give them like, okay, uh, when did you realize that you knew that you were your perceived gender identity and they could type out how much gender which she wanted, about what age, and how they came to that realization. So very excitingly, thanks to Dr. Goldie's connections, and you know, um, you know, with this issue, I'm sure we did. We've got 164, 164 um, participants. And so in the next few slides, we're going to go over like demographics to kind of like you know, kind of see like what kind of data we got. Um, so demographics wise, we uh, and as for race, we had about like a little more than half of white, uh, the two biggest chunk of white in the planet. We had 96 white um, participants, and 67 so participants followed by black and uh, you know, half of of the other other races. Uh, this paper is this is somewhat pretty representative of like skin diverse population. Um, that was kind of for more uh, minority populations here. For sexuality you more a healthy mix with you know six eight heterosexual um, participants followed by uh, 25 gay, 40 bisexual and so on. So healthy mix overall. Now you know of course the main chapter of the four is for gender identity. So here's what you know how it turned out Obviously, since we're at St. Edwards, it was a pretty big chunk of the of cisgender women, like with 91, to the point I had to put in a quota to like maybe screen out and go for like the uh, gender diverse and like cisgender women. Uh, we had 22 um, of each school cis and trans men, which is very, which is very exciting. And that, as you can see here, a lot of uh, non binary, gender queer, and other related um, entities. I um, also have to clarify that for identity, for these identities, I put in a checklist as if they just like multiple identities. So these won't add up to 164. For example, like someone who is a transgender woman can also select non-binary or gender queer, these don't want to. Um, how I ask and analyze, analyze these in the statistics is that if you select a cisgender, um, you know, where you're not told me it would still put you as cisgender, but if you select any of the, you know, say transgender, or not binary, it will put you very diverse. So now we get to like a lot, a lot more paragraphs, so like don't worry guys, um, you know, <laughs> we're all we're really for some going. Okay, so obviously the overall analysis was about okay between gender diverse and cisgender. So we can see that um, you know what we uh, really saw was very significant across all measures. You know, so uh, so gender diverse people had low social social gender recognition and high levels of their reflection, rumination, and preoccupation with other people's perceptions and daily statements. What this means is that cis people felt more comfortable with how other people saw them, um, but they didn't, they didn't consider their opinion about reflect, their reflect on the gender as much as gender people. Um, I'm sorry for the movie, I'm just trying to, like, I can't point to it, they usually do. <laughs> um, okay, so then I'm kind of curious, okay, so what does this look like if we break it out further, and are there any differences between cisgender women and men compared to other groups? And generally, no, there weren't any differences. Um, it was still something all across the board. As you can see here, um, you know, the both cisgender women and men had you know higher social gender coordination than trans men, and you know, the same trans before, um, lower, lower gender recognition, gender recognition and gender reflection than trans men. Um, this this likely become, you know, and it was kind of surprising at first because I assumed that Cisgender women might have higher, at least, gender reflection, um, just due to, um, you know, the, due to patriarchal values and misogyny. But you know, the thing is, these questions dealt with more gender, gender expression, and gender themselves. So, and not just not gender discrimination. So, the reason why cisgender cis women and cis men are, you know, have similar scores is due to shared gender continuity, as in you don't have, um, you know, issues with the gender or gender. Themselves. But trying to be my you know, as you know, transitioning from it, um, feeling to come. Uh, I also was kind of curious if um, if anything changed across race to see if there any cultural differences popped up here. And for the most part, you know, the only thing that we saw um, was the uh, social gender role recognition, and that was and that was seen as Hispanic participants tend to have higher social gender role recognition than white white participants. The reason behind this, or like you know, it's kind of unclear, it could be due to cultural factors or this is how the demographics, as in there are more uh, you know, non-conforming white participants in Hispanic. 
So I would like to give you possible and how to do more research in this area, just to kind of see if this you know a consistent um, you know this is a consistent result. So finally, I'll ask you this page. So is there any internal variation um, within um, the system of population? And this is sort of mixed with okay, it. So uh, so for social gender role recognition and for preoccupation, they were not significant. So they are similar in both, in both those areas. But for gender reduction, elimination, and antecedents, um, people who were not heterosexual as gay, asexual, or bisexual actually had higher um, actually had higher scores than heterosexual. So this means that ASD is considered about the gender more, but it didn't seem to have any issue with how people identified them or how people saw them. So this is a very interesting finding. Um, so the five key results were super interesting, and there is a whole bunch of data that I wish I could put more in, but we're on a tiny bit. So here are some reports you all can read through as a few of the few of the as a few reports of the main data found. Um, one one thing I just found was um, a situation where people reported how they had to actively perform the gender and like it's the for them, um, and that they often express caution and interest and qualities. And how they, you know, were also uncomfortably aware of of gender gender expectations on themselves. Um, as for uh, gender diverse people, they were, were much more likely than cisgender people to express ongoing and future gender exploration, and they had longer, more in depth descriptions of the gender gender identity when you know asked to to self describe themselves. And they also talked a lot about gender inclusivity and transition. Um, what I also noticed is that um, we asked, we also had um, cisgender people tend to have an earlier uh, gender organization than transgender people, as in, uh, say, a cisgender person would be like, I always knew, whereas transgender people would be like, either I always knew, or they had as an adult transition. Um, what I also noticed was that uh, since we had a lot of cisgender females and transgender females, uh, what I, you know, what I found that well, both did talk about uh, the organization and like certainly against that social world. Cisgender uh, women tend to talk more about um, cisgender discrimination against them, or as a like cisgender misogyny against them, whereas trans men often um, usually talk about transphobia and trying to um, also like identify something else. Like, say, for example, cis women had no problem identifying themselves as feminine, whereas trans men often express how they struggle to uh, be seen as. I know, as their transition um, gender. So, in the cases I conclusive to general is that um, this kind of follows uh, prior trends, as in gender diverse individuals um, have have more have more in common, especially each other than most cisgender people. But um, as in quality results, they also indicate they also have a lot of internal variation. Um, and and as seen in the cisgender um, quality section. It's also the most previous, um, you know, the most previous studies that you know, signal um, bias against perceived gender inequality. For example, in that Grace very recent study in like LA high school, um, kids who are seen as socially uh, gender nonconforming experience more school violence. And as always, I would like to continue more research in this area. And uh, for example, future research I would like to do are actually this with a lot of example, um, and looking to generational and cultural differences, and example like association with disabilities, disorders, and mental illnesses, um, and of course other aspects of their identity. Uh, thank you all, um, thank you Dr. Bodhi, and thank you all for this research. Um,